Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today let's talk about a problem that we can be solved by using the method of Lagrange multipliers. Okay, so we have the function and then we also have the constraint here and we want to find the maximum min value for this function. So that means we are having this objective function as the what? This is f, which is f of xy is equal to x squared plus y squared. And our constraint function, okay, our constraint function if we move the 4 over, then we are going to have our g of xy is equal to x times y minus 4. And then that's going to be 0 if we move the 4 over, and then we subtract the 4 from both sides, so we get this function. So now we are ready, and how do we how do we actually get started on this? So we are going to find the gradient of f, find a gradient of g, and then now set up the equation. So now first, the gradient of f is going to be what? We take the derivative with respect to x for the function for our x component. So we're going to get 2x, okay? And then what about the, uh, the, the, the fy? fy will be 2y, okay? So gradient of f is finished, okay? And now gradient of g. Gradient of g is to take the derivative of this with respect to x and with respect to y. So for the x coordinate, we have the what differential with respect to the x, then we get just the y here. What about the other one? The other one is x. Okay, so now we have the gradient of f and g, so now we can set up the equation. So you can see that we have gradient of f equals lambda times gradient of g. Now because the two sides are both vectors and the lambda is a scalar multiple of um, a, <clears throat> Um, scalar that we multiply to the gradient of g. So in that case, we have 2x equals lambda times a y. So now we have the system of equations that we set up. So first equation, 2x equals lambda, right? And then times the, the x-coordinate of the gradient of g. So we have the y here. And then now the second equation, second equation will be 2y, which is coming from the gradient of f, equals lambda times the y coordinate of the gradient of g, which is x. So now that's our second equation. And the last equation is going to be the constraint equation. We can actually just write down the original one. So x, y is equal to four. So now we have the three equations here. This is the setup. And then now our focus is going to be on solving this nonlinear system of equations. Okay, so, um, there are many different ways that we can solve this system, so there's no just one way of solving this system. Um, we can, we just need to make sure that we organize our work so that it, we won't get lost in the middle of the solving process, okay? So one thing that we can do is to make substitution. This is what we can do. We can start with equation one, okay? And then we start with equation one, which will give us, if we isolate the x here, we solve for x and we divide both sides by two. So we get x equals, and then one over two lambda times y. Okay, we can now, what do we do? We can now make the substitution into the second equation here. So substitute in there. And then what do we get when we do that substitution? Then we are going to now get what? We're going to get 2y is equal to lambda times x. The x is replaced by this thing. So we are going to get 1 over 2 lambda times y. And so now we have this new equation here. And then if we just um, just continue with this equation, we can, we can actually move everything to one side. So we're going to get 2y minus and then 1 half. Okay, and then lambda times lambda is lambda squared, and then there was a y, right, equals zero. So now you can see that they both have a y in it, so we can factor out the y. Okay, we can factor out the y. So we are going to get 2 minus 1 over 2 lambda squared is equal to zero. And now that will give us two cases over here. So one case is coming from the y, which is y equals zero. And the other case is when this factor 2 minus 1 over 2 lambda square is equal to 0, which will give us lambda square is equal to, well, 1 over 2 lambda square. Moving the 2 over, so we get negative 2, and then multiply both sides by negative 2, we are going to get positive 4, so that will give us lambda to be plus or minus 2. Okay, so we actually get three cases, either y is equal to zero or lambda is equal to plus or minus two, but there are two cases involving here. So now let's continue. Okay, so um, let's write down the cases. Let's write down the cases. Case one, okay, so now 
we should start organizing our work. Case one is when, what is that? Y is equal to zero, okay? Y is equal to zero. So when y is equal to zero, we can um, we can actually start plugging in back into, well, remember that the point that we are getting must satisfy all three equations and especially the constraint equations. So if we plug the zero into this third equation, guess what happened? We have x times zero is equal to four, but that's not possible because zero times anything is zero. So we are getting no solution for this equation. Okay, so we are not going to continue this case. And then now consider the next case. The next case is going to be, what do we get? Lambda is equal to, let's do two. Okay, positive two. And then because the third equation, okay, because the third equation does not even have um, a lambda in it, so we are going to plug it back into the second equation or maybe the first, it's up to you, it doesn't matter, right? So we can see what happens. In this case, well, let's look at the first equation. If we plug the lambda equals 2 back into the first equation, okay, it becomes what? It becomes 2x is equal to 2, right, because we plug the lambda in here, 2y, okay. And then now that gives us that x is equal to y. If x is equal to y, then now we can look at the third equation x is equal to y, so that means we are going to get x squared is equal to 4. And so that will give us that x is equal to plus or minus 2. And so we have two values under this case here, so now we can just write um, the subcases, so case 2.1, okay? And then what's going on here? x equals 2, so when x equals 2, and then what do we have for the y? Because now we know that x is equal to y, so that means when x equals 2, y is also equal to 2. And then the second subcase is when x is equal to negative 2, that's coming from here. And that tells us that because y is the same thing, right? So we get y is equal to negative 2. So now we are getting those two critical points over here. One of them is 2, 2, and the other one is uh, negative 2, negative 2. Okay, so those are the two critical points that we have. But that's not finished. We still have the case 3. This is when our lambda is equal to negative 2. And so now if we plug this lambda equals negative 2 in the, in, back into the first equation, now look at the first equation here, 2x equals lambda times y, so we get, we get 2x is equal to negative 2, which is the lambda times y. And then if we divide both sides by um, 2, so we get x equals negative y. Now, starting looking at the third equation, x equals negative y, and then we are going to get negative x squared is equal to 4. But then there is no real solution to this equation. As you can see that because x squared is non-negative and then put the negative in front of it, then it will be non-positive, but it's equal to a positive number so that we have no real solution here. So now we are getting the two critical points, 2, 2, negative 2, negative 2. And then now what do we do? And the next step is to just find the values, right? So we can find the values. So now we have, we just plug the, the 2, 2 in here. So the 2 and then 2. Okay. And then what do we get? We get x squared plus y squared. So we get the 2, 2 in here. And what do we get here? We get 4 plus 4, which is 8. Then the next one is going to be... Negative 2, negative 2, and then do the same calculation. So negative 2, negative 2, but because of the squares, we are still getting positive 4 plus positive 4, which is still 8. But now the problem is that we are not able to compare, right? Because they're both the same values. How do we know whether this is a max or min? Now we got to go back to the original problem and see what's going on. Okay, so now going back to this problem, look at the constraint. We actually allow x and y to be as large as we want it to be because let's say y is like 400, for example, right? And then x would be 1 over 100 so that that will still satisfy the equation. So when y is 
arbitrarily big, and then x will be arbitrarily close to zero in, in that case. Okay, so in that case, um, what does that tell us? Because we, we make y to be arbitrarily large, and if you go back and look at the function, when this is big, this is approaching zero, but remember that they're both square, so this is not going to cancel with this number here. So you're going to get something close to zero, but this number, there is no limit. It actually can get as large as you want it to be. So in this case, then the function actually goes to infinity, right? As you let either x or y to approach infinity. So in this case, we will have those as the minimum, right? And so what does that mean? That means we have our function having a having a minimum value on the uh, on the constraint at those two points. Okay, so that's it for this problem. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.